What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So this is episode 11 of the R1 build series. Can't believe we made it this far. So um, the bike's looking really good, but we keep getting packages. So we got to keep doing videos. <laughs> so tonight we are going to be installing the Evotech radiator guard and oil cooler guard. So for me, when I'm out on my rides, um, I'm always getting the guy in front of me kicking up some sort of rocks, whether it's at you know the front of the front cowling or in my helmet i'm just feeling it um and i checked out my radiator from the riding videos that i posted um what was it the last weekend and i do have some bent fins so we're going to be straightening those out with the radiator comb so i'll show you guys that process and then we'll be installing um the radiator guards so you know this is just a very inexpensive way to save yourself a very expensive fix if you ever get a punctured radiator um, not only that, I just wanted to give you guys a little update. So I reached out to Superbike Unlimited, who I ordered the belly pan from. So it is the uh, Lakamoto MK2 Slim belly pan in all black. Um, we might get it painted gloss. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, it does come in a black color, but I think it might be a flat black. I'm not sure. We didn't go carbon. We're not going to do that. Don't, don't don't mess with me in the comments about that. <laughs> um, so that is on the way, but I, you know, they did say it's like four to six weeks. So it is going to be a little bit till we get that. But once we get it in, we're going to do a video and I'm super stoked to see, you know, that back end covered up and um, that sleek look that it, uh, the belly pan, you know, provides. So um, it's been a little bit since we did a build series. So I'm going to update you guys on a couple things that we threw on. They're a little small, you know, upgrades to the bike that um, I wanted to throw on. So I didn't think, you know, it would have been like a two minute video or something. It wasn't even worth it. So let's show you guys those parts. So let's take a quick look at the bike with a few parts that we added from the last video. So nothing major here, just black windscreen bolts. I don't know why, because on the R6 they come black, but on the R1 they were silver, so we definitely had to get rid of those guys. Um, we went with the Evotech, following the theme of the bike, of course. Um, weighted bar ends, so they do stick out a little bit farther than stock, so a little bit added um, crash protection and they are weighted. So um, the weight really is to reduce the vibration in the handlebars, which uh, which transfers a, eventually to your hands and um, you can get that kind of soreness in your hand after too much vibration. So the extra weight um, does help reduce that and it has, you know, the nice logo on the side. So liking the look of those, it is a matte finish. Um, definitely better looking than the gloss in my opinion. And for the rear, we went with the rear axle sliders by Evotech. So we finally got these guys on. Um, give a little bit more crash protection for the rear just in case. And we also moved the spools from the rear to the front. This does lift uh, the back tire more centered from this angle instead of back here. So when we use the Pitbull tire wedge, which goes on right here, um, it actually will um, assist us with taking off the rear wheel if we ever need to. So that was a few changes that we made. And there is a part under here that I can't show you guys yet, but it was a little collaboration with a um, part designer that works with Yamahas. Uh, we will show that probably in a couple weeks. I'm not allowed to show you guys yet, but um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, the guy does some great work with the the products he's developing so i'm excited to show you guys that and yeah let's check out the evotech radiator guards all right so let's take a look at the oil filter guard by evotech so it's got a nice flat black finish um, looks to be built very very well um, there's hardly any flex at all and um, this honeycomb mesh style is a lot finer than the stock um, oil filter guard so it's definitely going to give you a lot more protection against any sort of rocks um, from damaging your oil cooler so it's a pretty simple install from um, what I understand I haven't seen any other R1 video installs um, that are from Evotech there is one from STG 
with the Cox Racing um, guards. So I think this might be the first one for an R1. Um, so that's pretty cool, but it's, it's supposed to be pretty easy. Just drop, drop in these two tabs so it just uh, slides on top. And then these bottom two bolts from the stock cooler and the fairing will just go in here and then it is mounted. So pretty easy install and uh, looks great. So let's check out the radiator guard. So to go along with the styling of the oil cooler guard, um, this is the radiator guard from Evotech. So it has the same honeycomb mesh pattern, um, the same build quality. I mean, it flexes a little since it's not a straight piece, but um, it's definitely, I mean, you can just tell it's designed and built very, very well. Um, so they do give you these foam pads and the purpose of these is to put them along the outside of the guard to give your radiator a little space from the guard itself. Um, so basically there's, you know, this little amount of space from the guard against the fins. And I believe that's just in case something were to protrude from the honeycomb finish that it wouldn't um, damage the fins. Um, maybe also to reduce vibration as well. But um, for my R6, I went with the RNG radiator guard and I wasn't that happy with it. Um, it did have the hook here at the bottom which attaches to the uh, stock radiator mount at the, at the bottom of it. And the RNG one was basically held together with zip ties. So there was a zip tie on each corner. And I don't know, I just didn't like you know, thinking that <clears throat> my guard was held together with zip ties um, and one bolt at the bottom. So uh, apparently from Evotech, uh, this just slides on, slides on the top and then you screw in the bolt in the bottom and this thing is going to be very secure. So it uh, looks great, build quality is great and I think it's gonna look uh, pretty sweet on the bike. So let's get to the install. So it's kind of a hard angle to get on camera, but this is a condition of my radiator after about 1200 miles. So yes, of course, it's not terrible, but um, to me, you know, I'm definitely going to be um, straightening out as many of the fins as I can. I am a little bit OCD, so I definitely want to fix these. And um, on Amazon, All Star Performance, they make these little radiator combs. So they have different sizes for different radiator spacings. And basically you just run this through your radiator fins and it should straighten them out. So uh, this is gonna be the first part of the process before we put um, any of the guards on and you know taking off the fairings and getting everything ready to go. So uh, let's give this guy a shot. So this was kind of a fail, um, <laughs> I'll admit it. The uh, finest that they have is 20 fins per inch, and I believe the radiator fins are more than 20 fins per inch because I could not get each of these teeth in between the fins. But I could see how this could be useful to fix, uh, you know, your bent fins if you had the right size. So uh, I'm just going to be fixing the bigger ones with a you know, screwdriver or something, uh, maybe like a small flathead, and I'll spare you guys that footage, so we'll jump straight to uh, taking off the fairings for the install. All right, so I straightened out as many of the fins as I really thought that were necessary. Like like I said, it's just me being OCD. So it says um, that we need to take off the push pins here, here, there's another one here, also up top here of this inner liner section. And then we will work on taking off the side fairing. So it's kind of a hard camera angle to get with the tripod, but um, this is the best I can do for now. So let's pop those out. So we did pop out the one down here, there's one on the side here, 
one on this side as well and one up top there's also one in the middle that we're going to pop out as well and then do the same thing on the other side it looks like we got the one out in the middle right here let me see if i can get that for you right here which combines both pieces and then there is um, this jis uh, screw rivet right here so we're going to remove that So we're also going to be removing the one from this side. So now we're also going to be removing the push pins on the left side as well. So the one down here. And then the one up top, right under the headlight. So now we can start pulling out the inner left section of the fairing. So it does also join up in this top section here. So we have to slide it out from the section on the right and then this section just pulls up all the rivets are removed okay so we're gonna take off this left fender to see what's going on underneath it uh, but the left side for some reason is not coming off as easy as the right so so we're gonna start by removing the Allen bolts from the fairing. Um, looks like they are the quick releases, which are nice. Yep, quick release there. So now we have this side done. We need to get back here as well. Now I'll do the one at the bottom. It's also a quick release, wow. I like these quick release, they're really nice. So we can pull up from the heat shield to get the fairing off. Now it's hanging down there. And we need to undo these inner bolts from the oil cooler. So these are a five millimeter. make sure that when you put it back together that you um, include that washer on it so I know that once the fairing section is loosened up and you're supposed to push this forward there you go <laughs> and then let's see okay that inner lighter liner was just stuck a little bit had some dirt and some grime on there now this bottom section um, right here that connected down here also slides forward to um, get released as well. So we'll put this off to the side. So there's actually a push pin. It seems like, well, yep, there's a push pin way back up in here to release this inner fairing section. So that's what we were missing. Let me get our little bolt head, reach way back here. Yep. Now that this plastic rivet is out, we can pull out this, this inner liner, I think. Yep. Nope. So this inner liner is holding, I believe what looks like to be some sort of headlight connection or maybe the uh, connection for the dash. So I think we can get the radiator guard installed just with this one hanging. So let's move to the right side of the bike, take off the fairings. Um, and then we might have to take out the coolant reservoir, the overflow tank. So let's take the fairings off, go from there.
So we got the right fairing off, I'm gonna put that aside. So this is actually the first time for me at least taking off um, the fairings and inner uh, fairing liners for this bike. Um, it wasn't as complicated for my R6, but um, it's just different, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't say it's more complicated, but this part here just looks like it lifts off and then pulls away. So this part here just looks like, like we saw earlier, the two tabs, and then that just lifts off. So as I mentioned, on our left is the Evotech oil cooler guard, and on the right is the stock. So you can see the difference in the protection that you're gonna get from something like this compared to what they provide with stock. Easy install, like I said, just slide on the top two tabs bottom two tabs um, just sit over these um, two areas right there and then the bolt in the end will um, screw it tighter to the oil cooler. And that's that. It's already installed. Oil cooler is cake. <laughs> so like I said earlier, um, I'm learning how to take off the fairings and access all of these sections of the bike for the first time um, and bringing you guys along with it. But I mean, it's good to get your hands in there and learn where and how to access different parts of the bike. So um, even though this did look complicated and I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning and Ev Evotech's instructions made it seem a lot more simple than it actually was. Um, <laughs> You know, figuring it out is actually a good thing. So if you have to go back in for any reason, um, you know, you have an idea of, of what you're in for and what, what you need to do for the future. So right here, we're taking a 10 millimeter socket. Um, it wants us to reverse the um, coolant reservoir. So we just pulled out these two sockets and I don't know if we'll be able to reverse it like they're saying in the picture without the top coming undone, but at least having it loose to where we can apply the adhesive on the tank side of the reservoir um, would be good to do. Or I guess we could just pull it off. So I actually just removed the coolant overflow reservoir temporarily. We'll put it back on at the end, but It'll give us access to put the adhesive right here on the inside of um, the reservoir tank. So it does want us to do four strips of the foam padding that was supplied in the packaging on the inside, right down the middle for the um, coolant reservoir, or sorry, reservoir tanks on the side. So we're gonna split this in half. And we're going to go from the top down, get it centered. So after a quick look at the manual, just to double check, it actually wants you to put it on the lip of the radiator and not, not on the um, tank itself. So I assume that's where it's going to have contact once it's mounted. So to get to this, uh, the other side of the radiator, there's actually, what are these, fives? One, two... Looks like just two holding on this harness to the side of the radiator. So we're gonna take these off as well so we can get the, the foam up towards the top. So now with this loosened up, I can see the entire line um, where we're supposed to put the adhesive. So this is now a lot easier with this side um, loosened up. All right, so that looks good. So we have the foam installed over the lip of the radiator on each side. So now we're gonna loosen that bolt right here. I believe it's a 10. So to get this 10 off, we um, I would advise using a swivel because it is hard to get um, a socket in there. We could use an open end, but I uh, wanna make it a little bit quicker. So we'll try this guy uh, with a 10 millimeter socket.
So we're going to feed that bolt through and that nut. Alright, so we have both the oil cooler and the radiator guard installed. Like I said, make sure to put the foam pads on the lip of the radiator because that where is where it would um, cause some vibration, maybe some some sound. So it looks good. It wasn't that hard of an install, it was actually more hard <laughs> figuring out the fairings in the plastic situation, so Let's put everything back together and finish her up. So now with installing this bottom section, let's make sure that we slip it over the same tabs up top that we slip the uh, oil guard over. Now let's secure this bottom section with the 5mm bolts. Now we can start putting the right side of the fairing back on. Now I would recommend sliding this bottom section in first. Um, it seems to be one of the harder sections to get. So you could start with the bottom. There's two tabs that need to go in. There we go. So now we have those both slid back. So once you pull it up top here, you can actually just push it backwards. There you go. So go on the inside with your hand and push the fairing up against the side of the oil cooler fairing so it's mounted tight. Remember everything's pushing this way. It's kind of hard to describe but once you pull it back and you can kind of see where it needs to go then you would understand where it needs to pull back and where to guide it with your left hand. So this is the part that is not easy to film, <laughs> but basically just popping the inner fender, it slides up in here before it um, gets into place on the right side. And the other, the left side actually overlaps it and there's a push pin, push rivet right up here actually back here but they do overlap so make sure to slide this one up into this lip right here and now should snap into place to where it's flush yep so now we just have to put all those plastic rivets back and don't forget the one all the way in the back corner that we missed the first time <laughs> so let's get that done Also, don't forget that there is that JIS rivet right here. First off, I'm going to overlap them up top. 
and then push it forward into the nose. There we go. So now these are overlapping. Now we can put that plastic push rivet in the middle to join the two together. So this one just goes right in the center. Now we have that JIS screw, type rivet, put that in here. So I usually hand tighten them until they get to the bottom. At that point, I will lightly use the Phillips because I do not have a JIS screwdriver. That one's in. Now we can just push on the left side, pop it in. So the first one we're gonna do is around the oil cooler. Got that one. Next one is gonna be right above it on the side. And then the last one for this side of the inner fender liner is gonna be up top. Which is right there underneath your high beams. And that's it. We're done. All right, guys, so we got everything installed. So there is the oil cooler guard. You can see the logo right there. Looks clean and right above it. Radiator guard. So everything's actually worked out pretty nicely. I'm happy with uh, how it turned out, how it mounted up. Um, so yeah, let's bring it up top. All right guys, so we just got done installing the radiator guards from Evotech. So if you couldn't tell, it was a difficult job and it was also difficult to film, get the right angles, get the lighting right, and to uh, you know guide you through what I was doing in case you wanna do this install yourself. Um, I think it's a very inexpensive part that can save you from a very expensive fix. And I wouldn't be intimidated by the install after watching this video. I think it's, it's, it's something very important if you work on your bike to understand how your bike's put together. Um, that's at least how I look at it. So the more I know about my bike, the more I know how parts go together, what can go wrong, things that can come loose, what might need, need to be loctited, how things, you know, are really, the whole bike's kind of put together. It gives you a lot more understanding of what you're riding on. Um, so if anything goes wrong down the future, you know, you have a good idea of what to do, or at least how to get to the point to find the problem. So I've never taken off the front end of my R1 like that, but it was hard to do. I didn't know what I was doing besides the instructions from Evotech, which weren't that great. Um, but now that I've done it, I could do it again. And, you know, it's going to be a lot quicker of a process. With my R6, I can take off my front end and I don't know, five, five minutes, 10 minutes or something like that, just because I've done it and I understand how everything goes together. So for me, it was a good learning process. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please drop a like. I mean, this, <laughs> this was a hard video to make. Um, and drop a comment if you guys have a question. Uh, I'm gonna leave a link for all the parts that we discussed and showed today in the video in the description below and subscribe for the future episodes so we also added two more series to the channel so we have vice's garage which we just uh finished part one of the first episode hoping to get part two done uh maybe next week or the week after then we just started sunday sessions so that's more of the writing videos uh, so we had three uh three part video last weekend um and then we'll see about this week if we're gonna do a sunday session but I'm just trying to get creative with uh, my channel and, you know, do what I enjoy doing and bring you guys along for the adventure. So, all right, guys, well, ride safe and stay tuned for the next one. I'll see ya.